August 2017, I was commissioned for biggest pieces for a church yet to be built in Sydney. Uh, those pieces were to be uh, almost two meters tall and uh, one meter wide. And uh, they were to represent uh, Marian main events uh, such as uh, the Annunciation, uh, the Coronation of the Virgin, the Assumption, and the Immaculate Conception. Instead of traditional icons, I could deliver paintings that have uh, the strong iconic sense and feel, and uh, even combine traditional icons, but overall they are really not traditional icons, but religious paintings. The first one that I tackled with, that I started with, was the Annunciation. Well, it was an utterly important uh, piece because whatever the outcome would be, it would dictate the way the remaining three are done or are to be done. So I decided to combine again the traditional iconography with something completely different, something at a different kind of, uh, different part of spectrum. So I use the traditional iconography of a most wonderful or wonderfully dynamic angel of Gabriel basically landing in full flight and uh, uh, bringing the good tidings to Mary. And uh, in between them, I placed the scroll or banderol with uh, just uh, Latin Ave Maria and Grazie Plena, because I thought that every single painting that was a decision I made before I started painting, every single one of those four paintings have to have either a full scroll or pieces of scroll or some sort of inscription that would kind of link them all in Latin. So, to the traditional iconography, uh, I juxtaposed the background of uh, vibrant, luminous, I would say, uh, oakish, yellow, earthy background that just basically was nothing other than just the world, the background, the context, the interior, uh, where the whole scene was unfolding, where it took place. But outside of that yellow or ochre, uh, most vibrant uh, uh, parchment-like piece, uh, I enveloped it with some sort of a darkness of, let us say, again, uh, perhaps refer, refer it to you as a uh, primeval chaos and darkness or of confusion before the light of a revelation. That is something, or that is how we call it in the traditional iconography. So the idea was to say that in the midst of chaos, not to use overly the word or to open the word cosmic chaos and confusion, basically we have the bringing of light, bringing of the good news, bringing of something new to happen, something very important to happen. Uh, I'll, I'll just touch on treatment. Uh, again, I'll repeat, uh, reiterate that I was intentionally or have been intentionally dealing with ambiguity uh, of those of the juxtaposition of to, those two different worlds of the rigid, structured, premeditated world of, of icons or icono traditional iconography with the seemingly rules more liberal, uh, bold, more creative, more artistic uh, way that I have been doing the background with. To that end, I was dealing with a lot of pointillism and divisionism. The techniques that were used in Impressionism and Post-Impressionism, we know about that a lot, and which is also very tangential in my uh, work and in my heart with the work of Aboriginal top artists. I'm saying top artists just because I have 
the uttermost regard for the top Aboriginal artists and I think that what they do is uh, uh, volcanically uh, good, so good that it is actually inexplicable how it can come about that people can reinvent themselves uh, over and over again in such a short space of time from the moment the Aboriginal painting basically began in the 1960s. Thinking about which painting now comes uh, next to be done, I thought of the coronation of the Virgin because I came across in my research uh, came across a painting, uh, quite famous painting by El Greco. So, in that depiction, we had God the Father uh, depicted with Christ uh, crowned in the coronation scene. Although aware, fully aware of the controversial situation with the depiction of God the Father in the religious art, be it for Catholics or for the Orthodox people, uh, or for the others, for that matter. Uh, uh, Father who has commissioned me and myself decided that we still go ahead and uh, base uh, this particular painting on the El Greco's uh, prototype done in the 16th century. But uh, I did not want any kind of illustrative depiction of God the Father doing it in the same way uh, that I'm doing Christ, Jesus Christ, and Mary as well. So I painted him in, in an ethereal, suggestive way, uh, just hinting basically his presence, trying to make something completely different from what I uh, personally have done in the past and what has been done in the past in general, anyway. For the work, uh, for the treatment, I went back to my personal uh, way of using dot. But uh, the docking technique or pointillism enables uh, me to uh, achieve the vibrancy, the luminosity, the boldness, the shimmering effect, the, the, the effect somewhere between the heavens and the whole cosmos, generally speaking, the ether, if you like. So uh, I decided that to be a common thread or commonality for all four, four paintings. We are now talking uh, at the end of the 2017. I decided that the painting that I will be doing at the beginning uh, of um, January 2018 will be the one of the Assumption of the Virgin. I decided again to base myself on one of famous El Greco's paintings and uh, just uh, place the figure of uh, the Virgin here on the board to kind of uh, start off the whole process. In the end, it will look very little like any El Greco, but uh, it is just a starting point, the departure point at uh, this point in time for me. It will be, the figure will be surrounded by red mandorla, full of angels. The Renaissance mandorla uh, done in the West, not mandorla like we are doing it in the East, uh, Eastern iconography, traditional iconography. And there will be a scroll, very dynamic scroll uh, down, which would uh, talk about the assumption of the version. This is the third painting out of four. Marian paintings or artworks for the church in Rose Meadow, uh, New South Wales. We, from the very beginning, Father Christopher Sarkis and myself, didn't have any other brief but uh, wanted to make these works uh, powerful works of art. 
the preceding one, uh, the coronation of the Virgin, uh, I used partly the concept of uh, the famous El Greco painter. Here, the next one was the Assumption. And uh, what we wanted is to not make another Dormition like uh, icon like painting according to the traditional orthodox iconography but the assumption of the virgin and uh, again without any particular brief this time we knew we knew that it had to be in the vein of the previous two ones already made and also we know that we wanted somewhere in the painting the scroll with the or the inscription if you like with the title in Latin or part thereof. To that end, I again um, reached to the past and uh, directly borrowed the, the El Greco's uh, or part of El Greco's painting of the Assumption, which was basically uh, one of his first commissions when he came to Spain then executed nine paintings for a church and the assumption was basically his first commission and now kept in Chicago. Uh, that particular one is uh, quite known for its uh, phenomenon or uh, effect if you like of the foreshortening that he was kind of known for. I dare say also the beautiful uh, ultramarine color and so I just took that particular part of the Virgin ascending, being in the Assumption, and then tried to make a synthesis or a symphony of some very different things. One of them is Mandorla, Mandorla which means almond in the Italian, that, that's where it derives from. And uh, basically it is aura of glory, or if you like, overlap of the two worlds, heavenly and the human, uh, usually and mostly found behind the figure of Christ in the traditional iconography, but sometimes behind Mary as well. So in this particular case, we have the oval with angels, with cherubims, um, alternating with two different uh, colors, red, and uh, surrounded by two types of gold, 22 and 24 carats. In the middle, however, in the very background behind the, the body of the Virgin, I uh, treated the, the background uh, with the colors red, which are meant to uh, draw attention to, to to be recognizable from a distance because mind you all of these four paintings will be placed on a screen and viewed and observed by the parishioners uh, from some sort of a maybe between anywhere between 10 and 20 meters of a distance so it was geared for that type of uh, um, viewing not from close and then in the background we have a similar uh, turbulent, agitated, complex, vibrant, engaging situation which uh, according to some, uh, well first of all which had to be in tune and in vain as I said earlier with other two already executed paintings but according to some and I think so myself it couldn't have been done elsewhere it couldn't have been done in some other country other than Australia. We have a, a relatively unusual situation also with the, with the word Assumptio, which had to be done this way because after the Assumptio we have the words Beate Marie Virginis and that couldn't have fitted in this type of a scroll. So we just had the Assumptio or whatever you want to pronounce it because we actually do not know as a matter of fact how the, the ancient Romans uh, were pronouncing their own Latin really so we know how they uh, wrote it how they spelled it but not how they pronounced it 
I will leave to the people uh, who already started expressing their uh, opinions and uh, and views of uh, what does that remind them of to continue because uh, from the moment the painter uh, finishes the work the emotional uh, connection and relationship uh, stops and uh, it is not up to an artist to the creator to kind of explain much his work, uh, some of it has to be left to, to others as well. Over a year ago uh, I was commissioned this big project, Marian project, of four big paintings, um, which we conditionally can call icons. Uh, one was the, the Annunciation, the other, the Assumption of the Virgin, the third one, the Coronation of the Virgin, and this last one here, uh, the Immaculate Conception. So thinking um, and doing the research for this project, I collected all possible uh, images that uh, seemed relevant at the time of the Immaculate Conception all of them mostly coming from 17th, 18th, 19th century. Um, so old masters, all done in a very kind of similar vein. And uh, it was obvious, especially because we already had the three uh, completed uh, works that we don't want anything like a replica or copy of, of any of those, but to come up with something new Again, uh, having one foot in the traditional way or background and the other one in, into something new that we can't kind of uh, formulate so easily. So here we are on the 27th of October on a beautiful sunny day um, here at Central Coast of New South Wales where I live in front of my studio. We needed of this particular one of the Immaculate Conception is to be uh, part basically of that ensemble of the quartet that I call uh, myself. Uh, part of it in, in the way the treatment is done, uh, in the so-called style that it is uh, used, and but also to be sufficiently different. And giving something new, some more kind of a, uh, perhaps some, some new innovative boldness that I am always seeking for. Perhaps it is with the color, the color red that I use now more than in others, that uh, to some is and says it uh, is very evocative of the Australian opal kind of uh, beautiful glimmering and shimmering magnificence that ranges from from the, the, the fiery reds uh, to to opal like to uh, sapphire like blues etc and so forth so that satisfies another requirement that we uh, had for this project that the we come up with something completely new as as far as possible uh, as long as uh, anything completely new is possible in the first place but something that also has a touch of australiana with it all i can say perhaps at the very end is that uh, i need some sort of uh, linear time distance from this painting meaning that at this moment when i finished it i uh, i'm unable to see what how else would I do things, what else would I add or, or take away from it. Uh, for the time being it looks as, as uh, I could deliver as much as I did. But time will tell and uh, hopefully maybe one day I kind of take this further still or farther still because um, uh, we already kind of distance ourselves with this particular painting from the as I said, old prototypes, uh, 17th, 18th and 19th century 
paintings of, of uh, great masters of the past. So, but uh, I'm aware already now that uh, any subject can be taken uh, further and in a more kind of modern, uh, vibrant, engaging way anyway.